Greetings, you mighty champion. I'm Pastor Glenn, and I'm so excited to show you that the, what the Bible says happened to Jesus after he died on the cross. There were still several tasks that he needed to achieve in order to redeem us. Uh, in our last message, uh, lesson number one, this is lesson number two, we talked about the Mandela effect that refers to a situation that a large mass of people believe and even remember the event occurring when it didn't occur at all. It was falsely reported to the world and the world believed that Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 1980s because a human rights activist said that. Surprisingly, he was alive uh, and released from prison in the 1990s and became the president of South Africa and died in uh, 2013, okay? So the Mandela effect even applies to Christianity. Remember, Satan comes from the Revelation 12 to deceive the whole world. That means Christianity, Christians, you and I too. So we got to go by the word. In Christianity, every believer has heard and most obviously believe that what happened to Jesus on the cross finished our redemption. I said that for years because I heard men that I trust say that. Later, I went to the Bible to see if that was true. Most people, most Christians believe that the suffering and dying on the cross is where we were now enabled to be born again children of God, that, that God is now our heavenly father, that Satan was defeated, that when we die, we'll be absent from the body and live forever with the Lord because of what happened on the cross. However, that's not when or where our redemption was finished according to the Bible. Now, Pastor Glenn, don't say that. I believe that my whole life. Yes, I have too, until recently, sort of recently, because so many people that we love and trust said that from the time we were children. There's a, a word, something like confabulation or something like that. I think I'm making the word, the word close. And it's a word that explains how a person's brain has to fill in the gaps about situations when events uh, are events when when some facts are missing okay somebody walks by us in church and they're not smiling something's wrong with him he didn't say hi to me today wonder what's going on with jim or whatever right our mind has to fill things in we're going to study the actual facts from the bible and it's going to tell us about redemption the bible it's not fabricated information or misinformation that we've been told about redemption. I have personally repeated and taught things regarding God and the Bible that I heard popular ministers say because I trusted them and later found out that wasn't what God said at all. That was not what the Bible said, okay? Today, most ministers and Christians, including myself for a while, would swear that the penalty of our sins and the devil being defeated and us being able to be born again, sons of God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ and live forever with God in heaven was achieved by what Jesus did on the cross. To my astonishment, the Bible never says that, but you're gonna get to see with your own eyes and your own ears what the Bible does say. There were seven things that happened on the cross that are essential, so we can't put down the cross in any way it was essential, but it was the beginning of our redemption. And I'm going to show that to you. Perhaps in, from lesson one, the true Bible facts about the shepherds and the wise men, that there weren't three wise men, all that stuff. Maybe in, in reality, that's not important. It's not important because it doesn't affect our salvation or our healing or our uh, being right with God and it, being redeemed from the curse. It doesn't affect anything. It was just an example in lesson one, to show you that sometimes a lot of people believe wrong stuff about what happened in the Bible. The Bible fact is that the of uttermost importance for us to know when and how we were redeemed, when our redemption was completed, and it wasn't completed when Jesus said it is finished, he was talking about something totally different. I'm gonna show that to you. Just as we were told, and many believe, the untrue story about the three wise men that they found the newborn Jesus in the manger wrapped in swaddling clothes, when the Bible doesn't say that. It doesn't say how many men. 
And it's, they certainly, the Bible does say they found Jesus when he was over two years old in a house, okay? So our entire Christian life, all of us have been incorrectly told time and time again that our redemption was complete when Jesus said it is finished while suffering and dying, hanging on the cross. That, my friend, my brother, my sister, is simply not true. And don't be shocked about that statement because we're you're going to find out where that happened and your faith is going to boom because God is obligated to watch over what he did say, not what he didn't say. We're going to find out there's much more to redemption than just physical suffering of Jesus that he experienced on the cross. To say that Jesus redeemed us on the cross at Calvary is not really a full and accurate account of how and when we were redeemed. And so don't turn the radio off. Don't change channels. It's important that you know this and that you start magnifying a redemption from the cross, at the cross that was part of it. You could say the garden was part of it when Jesus sweat great drops of blood and said it, that my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. When That was part of the, the whipping posts where by his stripes were healed. That was part of it. The cross was part of it, but it wasn't the sealing deal of it. Redemption was not complete when Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. In actuality, redemption and Jesus being made sin and carrying the curse for us was only the beginning of redemption. The cross wasn't a place of victory. It was a place of shame where guilty criminals got what they deserved. It was a brutal punishment of death and how the government got rid of the scoundrels who were compulsive lawbreakers and a men menace to society. Our victory didn't come from the cross. Our sin and the curse left us at the cross. And I'll explain how that worked. And it's important. And just like we were incorrectly told about the three wise men found Jesus in the manger, Jesus saying it is finished and then dying on the cross uh, wasn't when the devil was defeated and our redemption was completed. Okay, when Jesus said it is finished, he was saying that him being made sin for us, the final sin offering was finished, that he was now carrying our sins. And that was not meant to say that he was paying the consequences and the penalty and the judgment for our sins. He was not saying the devil's defeated or that we could be born again or that the God of our, the universe is our heavenly father because we've had our nature changed through the new birth. He wasn't saying our redemption was finished. The cross was not where Satan was defeated and how we receive the new birth, and right standing with God, and eternal life. Our Christian victory is not at the cross, as we've been taught so many years. Our victory was secured three days later when Jesus arose from the dead, sprinkled his blood in heaven at the most holy place, Hebrews 9.12, Hebrews 9.23 and 24, and was invited by the Father to set at his right hand, Hebrews 1.3 uh, and 13, and Hebrews 8.1, and then God the Father turned to Jesus and called Jesus God, Hebrews 1.8. That's when, when redemption was finished. Listen, sin is a spiritual condition and a, a problem that couldn't be remedied by physical suffering. The physical suffering of Jesus on the cross was horrible and horrendous, but the spiritual suffering and victory he experienced after he died on the cross is what gives us eternal life and keeps us from going to hell and enables us to be born again children of God, praise God. When we say Jesus conquered sin and the devil on the cross, we're not, we're not telling the truth. We're not saying what the Bible says. And that's shocking to hear. I was as shocked 10 years ago to, when I discovered that as you are now. Jesus was made sin for us on the cross. He carried the curse on the cross. He carried the damning evidence uh, that the accuser of the brethren held against us on the cross. But the cross was not where the full penalty and consequences of sin was paid for in full and that the devil was defeated. Unfortunately, most 
Christian leaders, most pastors don't know this and have not given us the full accurate picture of what was required to redeem us. I'm going to give you that picture by the and verses. You're going to see it clearly. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry. Keep, please keep watching uh, this whole series. I don't know how many lessons I'm going to teach. I can teach a lot on it, but uh, this is number two. And uh, please like and subscribe below. I promise you that these lessons are going to be eye-opening to you, and you're going to be more full of revelation knowledge than the people around you. Make a great day.